Literally, the wheels are the very foundation that connect you, the rider, to the road. You turn your cranks and in return, the wheels rotate, propelling you forward. Today, I pit my wheels against each other. One set is the Zip 303S and the other set is Hunt 4454 Aerodynamicist. And I'll share you my thoughts, what I think about them. So now, roll that intro. This is yours truly, Diabetic Cycling, aka DC, and no, not the other DC. On this channel, I discuss a lot of things, everything relating to cycling, which would include gear reviews and some ride um, footages and stuff of that nature. So if that's uh, your sort of thing, please hit the uh, subscribe button, hit the like button, drop me a comment below as your cooperation as such will help this channel put out meaningful content going forward. I am not sponsored, nobody sends me anything to review. I buy everything that I talk about here with my own money. I have no agenda, I don't have a storefront, I don't need to push any product down your throat. Everything that I share with you will be purely based on my own experience, my own opinion, so that Perhaps if you're considering certain product and whatnot, then you hear from me as just a next door, somebody that you would run into on your Saturday group ride. Now onto the topic today. If you clicked on this video, I am going to assume you are a writer who understands why wheel upgrade is important and some, if not most, stock wheels, why they don't perform it. Probably one of the things first that actually get ditched after you set up a bike or buy a new bike. So both the wheel sets that I am going to talk about today are carbon, they are both tubeless, they are both for disc brakes, and I run the exact same tires on both of them, the Schwalbe Pro 128 millimeters. I even use the same sealant inside and they're coincidentally priced exactly, well, not exactly. So the Zip 303S retails for $13.99 for the set and Hunt 4454 sells for $13.89, $10 cheaper. All right, so now onto the topic on hand. The first set I'm gonna talk about is my Zip 303S. I believe this set was announced late last year and then a bunch of the, you know, you know who of the review world, they all got their sets to review. And then um, I personally got mine earlier this year and then I put the wheel set on my BMC Road Machine 2021 which I actually have a review of right here that I'll link so uh, you can see how I, what I think about the bike itself as a whole with this wheel set on there. The 303S wheel set basically evolved from their uh, 302 previous wheel set and there is a lot of trickle down technology from their Firecrest line which is a lot more uh, expensive and presumably featuring a lot more tech, pr probably lighter. That said, I've never written Zip Firecrest line of wheels so be that as it may, I wouldn't be able to tell you how my set 303S compares to more expensive brethren of a Firecrest line of wheels. So 303S that I have comes in 45 millimeter depth, which to me comfortably sits between uh, shallow depth box rims meant more for climbing as well as more deep um, more deep section wheels that are more for arrows. So I think 45 sits right where it's just like the sweet spot. It's not too arrow, it's not too shallow. So it's like a basically everyday performance value wheels that you could ride. 
obviously Ziv, I believe, had that in back of their mind when they were creating this wheel set, putting them at 45 mil deep, where it's literally all purpose wheel set that you could have, not too aero and not too shallow. And as we have all learned over the years, now the wider tires are faster in terms of uh, rolling resistance and everything else. So just as with that, we are now also understanding how aero gain to be had is actually greater value to you in terms of speed than just pure light set of wheels. And me personally, I think that's where the 45 millimeter deep wheels just really meet the middle ground catering to both end of the spectrum. So the 303 S wheel set features what's called hookless design, where the traditional clincher wheels have the hooks along the farther edge of the rims where the tire beads would actually hook onto creating this type of a situation. But these new wheel sets um, come with the hookless design and actually a lot of the big time manufacturers have now, they're, they're moving on to hookless design. So with that comes a uh, requirement of not over inflating your tires where if you put too much air then tires will just pop right off creating somewhat of a safety problem. So Zip provides your tire air pressure calculator on their website. So when you punch in all the numbers and I'm a 155 pound rider with my bike, I put my numbers in with the tires that I run. Basically the recommendation that they come up with is I'm supposed to run 55 PSI at the front and 59 PSI in the rear. Of course, that val those values will change depending on your setup, depending on your weight and everything else. But basically those are my uh, numbers in terms of a recommendations concern and initially when I first got them those numbers were somewhat shocking because you know I come from old school where I had the inner tubes despite I've been running tubeless for a while now for s several years so I am accustomed to lower tire pressure but not to this extreme I've actually never pumped anything below 60 I don't think on a uh, road tires so those were um, somewhat of a shock initially, but soon I found out the ride was more supple, more compliant, and soon I just completely forgot about the fact that I was running that low of tire pressure. As far as aesthetics, uh, I believe the graphic package to me looks clean. It's not overdone, it's not garish. Wheels are very good looking wheels. But not everything is rosy. So after rolling on these for thousands of miles, I have two main complaints. The first complaint that I have is based on all the other wheels that I've written last dozen years or what have you, the wheels don't perform as well as they should in crosswind situation. It's not very confidence inspiring. The front wheel, even at even just at 45 mil, they are very jittery and um, it doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence as far as the crosswind protection is concerned. Maybe the more expensive Firecrest uh, line of wheels with the, all those uh, dimples and all the fancy tech, maybe they perform better. However, on these 303S wheels, I am noticing the, cro the crosswind creates a bit of a problem on my front end. Second issue that I have observed is the wheels are not holding air for a very long time. So I am going to suspect, and I don't know this for sure, this is just my suspicion, I'm going to suspect that to being hookless design because I've never had these, ha, ha, I've never dealt with this ever before on any of my other tubeless wheels, whether aluminum, carbon, doesn't matter. So you pump to proper tire pressure PSI and then you notice the air is seeping out very, air is escaping a lot faster than you would think. Now I haven't had a situation where I would go out on a ride where mid ride I would have to like re-pump the air or anything like that. But basically say I pump in the morning to go ride, put down you know, 60, 70 miles of ride, come home. By that evening, the tires are just completely 
not completely flat, but flat enough to a point where I actually have to repump if I were to go out again. So those are some of the, those two things are the biggest concerns of mine as far as a Zip 303S set is concerned. So let's talk about my second set of wheels for the topic today, which are the Hunt 4454 Aerodynamicist. So 44 obviously represents the 44 mil depth on the front wheel and the 54 represents 54 millimeter depth on the rear. Now the name Hunt may not be very well known, especially here in the US, but these sets, those of, those of us that know, the, um, the Hunt really represents great bang for your money value wheel set. It, while providing all the performance necessary. I believe they also sponsor either one or two uh, UCI Pro world-class teams. I think Quebec riding on BMC runs Hunt Wheels. Um, check that if I'm wrong. But um, I, I, I remember seeing Hunt Wheels in Tour de France this year. And I have my Hunt Wheels uh, paired up on my Orbea Orca 2021 20, and I have that bike's review linked right up here. So if you want to take, if you want to watch what, how I feel about the bike overall with, the, uh, with this wheel set, then you can watch it right here. Now, as the name indicates in aerodynamics, the wheel set is basically heavily focused on being aero in mind. The whole 44 and the 54 creates this nice stance if you love that kind of stance where you run the uh, slightly shallower depth rim up at the front and with a little bit of a deeper um, depth on the rear side. It creates a great look. So unlike the 303S zip wheels, uh, the Hunt wheel set that I have has a little bit more traditional design in that it is a hooked design where the rim will sit like that and the tire bead will hook onto the rims as such. Therefore, I do run slightly higher volume of air in there, albeit nowhere near close to what it would be on a 21 millimeter tire with the inner tubes. Now the wheel set weighs in at 1495 grams, which some may argue that is a little heavy considering that we're in 2021. I, I, I mean, just a couple years ago, I remember thinking 1500 grams for a wheel set was deadly light, but things have changed. Now, 1495 to me, that's still light enough considering these are um, not short box rims and they are for disc brakes and things of that nature. So that is plenty light for me. The wheels are very clean in design, providing with a clean aesthetics where the wheels I think would look great under any color frame. So if I get nitpicky and try to come up with something that I don't like about this wheel set, again, I'm being very nitpicky because some may even consider this as a plus, not as a negative. And I'm not even sure if I consider it as a negative, but something that I do want to mention to you right now is that the real hub, the, the backside hub, which is a hunt hub, it's incredibly loud. So I've had a dozen, couple dozens of wheel sets over the years and this hub is by far one of the loudest, if not the loudest hub that I've ever had. So I'm going to show you a B-roll right here. I'm going to cut to it right now where I'm spinning and let it roll and let you hear how loud that is. All right, so which wheel set is better? So I'm gonna answer that um, like this, maybe a little bit of a cop out. You really couldn't go wrong with either set of these wheels. Now wheel sets are something that I think really represent laws of diminishing return, right? So $1,000 wheels are definitely gonna be two times better than $500 wheels. Maybe we can even make an argument $2,000 wheels would be two times better, better than $1,000 wheels. Now, at some point, you're going to reach a point where you go, now, are the $4,000 wheels two times better than 
$2,000 wheels? Probably not. And take a step further. The $8,000 wheels two times better than $4,000 wheels. To me, these $1,400 wheel sets represent really great performance at really attainable price. I'm sure the Meilenstein wheels are great at and if you could afford that set and uh, you have the super light wheel set making you super light, great. I am jealous. However, you know, not all of us can have that kind of a wheel set. And when you look for the sweet spot where the value, where the expenses, and you, when you talk about dollar per performance, I think both of these sets provide true value for performance and for your money. So that all said, I, if there's a gun pointed to my head and I have to pick, I do prefer my Hunt wheel set just by hair for the reasons that I do trust in more in crosswind situation. And it just feels to me that they spin up a little bit quicker and they can maintain that speed once they get start um, once they start rolling now that doesn't mean zip performs any worse uh, it is equally quick on spin up it is equally great in maintaining that speed um, but i just feel like it just does it just by hair better on the uh, hunt wheel set and if I haven't mentioned, um, I do feel a little bit more confident in crosswind situation. And as a bonus, I've also uh, dealt with customer service set Hunt for something different. And really they provide that we are a smaller company and we look at you differently as a customer type of uh, experience. So that goes a uh, big plus for Hunt when, now I haven't had a chance to deal with the, you know, SRAM or ZIPS customer service, so, so I don't know how they would be, but um, the little experience that I had with the Hunt customer service, big bonus way they treated me. In conclusion, I'll take either of this wheel set on any bike, any day, providing great performance for your dollar without having to remortgage the house. Aforementioned, like a lightweight Meilenstein wheels, as expensive and super light that they are, aren't, aren't they like a thousand grams per the whole wheel set? I think that's uh, really, you know, look what I'm rolling on type of wheel set than perhaps somebody like me and you, weekend warriors, you know, weekend Saturday club riders, um, more enthusiasts where we are really looking for as much performance as possible at sweetest price point that we can find and I both of these wheel sets do great job within that price range providing as much performance as they do so meanwhile both the sets are priced at attainable price point they are both great wheel sets so doesn't matter which one you get go get one if you're thinking about one ride more enjoy your day have a great ride have a safe ride until next time you guys all take care I've been diabetic cycling. You've been great, bigger humans. Until next time, I'm out.